Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Be Mobile Route Show. I'm Jerry, and as always, I'm joined by my associate, Jeremy. And today we're going to be uh, covering a topic uh, high importance to our DSD customers and, and often brought up inventory control. And inventory control in general can mean a lot of different things, and there are a lot of different moving pieces from uh, warehouse control to truck control. But today we're going to be focusing on specific questions on how you can bring inventory into your system, into your main warehouse, and, and what tools are available uh, to accomplish that. And uh, probably a couple different platforms and, and questions uh, from our customers uh, at different levels of how do I increase my on-hand warehouse quantity using my ERP system, and how do I use Be Mobile to accomplish that same feat? So let's dive right into it, Jeremy. Uh, discuss with us the different options on how we can increase our on-hand quantity using those two platforms. You got it, yeah, it's broken down into a few different parts, so we'll go through each one of them one by one. In this session, we'll probably have more of a discussion than demonstration, but there's a couple of things I'll show up at the very end uh, from the B Mobile perspective and from an ERP perspective, whether that be Sage or Intuit. Um, Pretty much everything holds true for most ERPs. Um, certainly you have to look into the one that you're utilizing and integrating with us, but uh, let's go through the first one. The first way to um, in, inbound inventory into the system is to do an adjustment. Uh, you might see that at the very first time you set up an item within the system if you're implementing new uh, to create an on-hand value and an evaluation of that inventory item that you have on hand whether that be at a cost of LIFO or FIFO or adjusted, cost, adjusted um, average cost, I'm sorry. But an adjustment is, is, could be positive, could be negative, and um, does just increases or decreases the on-hand quantity based on the valuation that you've uh, stated in the system. The second, uh, the second way to go is a PO receipt of goods. And, and a receipt of goods not in all systems, not in all ERPs, but in most would have an option to receive both the receipt of goods, so the warehouse person receiving the goods with or without the accounts payable bill associated to it. So from an account perspective, um, always better to do things in a segregation of duty. So the warehouse person says, I'm receiving 10 units. The, the units get imported or inputted into the system, the increase of on hand goes up. And, and later down the road, the, and that's the most timely way to recognize the increase in of inventory into the warehouse. And then a day later, or maybe the afternoon later, the bill comes in as well. And someone in accounts payable is vouching to say the bill is for 10, we received 10, therefore the, the world is correct. Um, in nature, and we received them in at the cost that we originally projected that the bill would be for. Um, sometimes causes an accounting, you know, um, some muddiness if things are different and costs are different from a general ledger perspective, but for lack of better terms, better to do it in, in from a timeliness perspective. Because if you wait to receive the goods with the bill, sometimes that's a day later or, you know, there's some sort of processing going on in the background. Right. Any questions so far, Jerry, from, from your perspective on those two, so far, those two ways in the ERP? No questions. All right. So the third way is similar to an adjustment is to do a fiscal count. The system says that there's 10 in the system. We count nine. Therefore, it would be a negative adjustment of one uh, that would be created based on freezing of inventory and the counting of an inventory fiscal count. Um, again, most ERPs come with the ability to freeze inventory and do a fiscal count. Um, check with yours if, uh, if you haven't seen it, but um, in, a, in a sense, it's creating a, an adjustment, nothing, nothing much different than just hand keying an adjustment in at, at the point you want to. Okay. The third way is to manufacture, assemble, or do a bill of materials on an item. This gets a little bit more complicated, and some systems have it and some systems don't and some systems have the ability to go multiple levels down. So the idea here would be if I'm making a, uh, a cupcake, 
you know, how much flour goes into one cupcake, how much yeast goes into one cupcake, how much butter goes mm -hmm. into one cupcake. And then when you assemble, it relieves the raw materials at their cost, rolls them up and creates one cupcake at the, at the associated cost levels um, there. Very typically, um, those systems can be very sim simplistic in a bill of materials or an assembly model. Um, up to a, a true what we would call process manufacturing solution, which is creating work orders and, and a, a traveler and moving through the process, relieving raw materials as it goes through the process to finalize a finished good once it's done. Um, so a few different ways to do it, but the whole idea at the, at the end of the day is to relieve raw materials and increase the on-hand quantity of finished goods. That's the method, method there. Any questions on those two? Just to confirm and uh, for our B-Mobile users and, and viewers watching, the finished goods, true statement that in, in the B-Mobile inventory tracking world, that, that they are seeing just the finished good and don't really touch the raw materials. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, that's typical. Um, not, not always. You might, uh, we have some clients that grind flour and sell it as a raw material, use it as a raw material and, you know, use it into a finished good. So not always the truth, but certainly uh, majority of our customers are, are selling finished good inventory as, as things that they sell and raw materials are just a, an, an extra item in the system for assembly purposes. Okay. Makes sense. So the last, uh, the last way inside of uh, to impact on hand quantities is to do a warehouse to warehouse transfer. So I'm taking in a, in a lot of our accounts, uh, they'll have a freezer. So I'm going from the freezer and increasing the on hand quantities of my, my uh, on floor stock because I'm taking some frozen product, letting it thaw out for the night and increasing the quantities on hand. I wouldn't necessarily say it's an increase of a quantity on hand per se, but it, it is related. Um, you are moving items from one warehouse to another. So in a sense, you're decreasing on one and increasing on another, but it is the last uh, form of, of movement that's happening within the on-hand quantity field. Uh, and B-Mobile has the ability to track multiple warehouses, correct? It does, and, and this could be a, a maybe a topic on its own. You know, some ERPs have the ability to track multiple warehouses. Some ERPs at different levels do not. Um, in the case of Intuit, they have a solution that if you're using Pro or Premier, it only has a single warehouse, but if you go to Enterprise, they have multiple, what they call location. Um, so you see different factors there. Um, inside of eMobile, you always have the ability to track multiple warehouses. The question is, how does it react to a system that only has a single warehouse? So you might find more dynamic information in B-Mobile, but the on-hand quantity says 100 in, in QuickBooks, but it says 50 are in the warehouse and, and 50 are on three different trucks. And that, that movement of inventory kind of stays on our side, but ultimate relief happens from the, the uh, main warehouse once the invoice is created or, okay. or cut. Okay. So any questions on in managing inventory on hand quantities inside of the ERP system? No, that covers it. All right, so let's, uh, I think the second question you had was ways to increase on hand quantities within B-Mobile. Yes. Um, that is a very similar um, discussion to, to uh, the ERP. The difference might be one one that we just discussed, which is warehouses may be in B-Mobile, but not in the in the accounting system. So in the case of uh, operations that have a large number of trucks, they may want to track inventory by truck, but they don't want to track it in the accounting system. They only want to track it inside of the route accounting system. So that's something we do. Um, but certainly we're going to go through a, a fashion of, of transactions, and the first one being an inventory transaction on the desktop. An inventory transaction for us can be either a um, an adjustment or a PO receipt or a vendor credit, uh, but ultimately it's it's creating an in, in, an impact of positive uh, adjustments or negative adjustments on the uh, on the uh, transaction or on the inventory item for on hand quantities. 
The second way is to do a PO receipt. Um, that can be done on the desktop or device. So that's one thing we're going to walk through at the very end of this is walking through a PO receipt on an Android device. Um, and for us, we're always receiving the without the bill. So we're impacting inventory. We're creating the transaction to send to the accounting system. Uh, but it is always a receipt of good, not a receipt of good with bill. It's just one, one major distinction. Okay. The third one would be a physical count, which can be in our system be done at a handheld level only uh, currently. So it's the ability for someone to grab a handheld and say, I'm going to count the muffins and I'm going to say there's a hundred in the system. It does the comparison, assuming you've kind of done the, the synchronization to the ERP. We know what the quantity is that should be in the warehouse. It's going to say there is supposed to be a hundred. There are only 98, therefore the adjustment will be for a negative two, and it would key up that adjustment, physical count adjustment for the accounting system to suck back in and make the uh, appropriate change. Um, and then certainly one that, that uh, we do a lot of is warehouse to warehouse transfers. Those can happen on the desktop and they're automated from the standpoint of the device. So things that automate the uh, warehouse to warehouse transfer are um, doing a start of day on the device and accepting the load uh, to the truck that you're utilizing for that particular route. So the load says we're taking 100 muffins with us. Um, the driver says I need 110 because the weather looks good and I know I'm going to outsell them. He decides to take 110 out of the warehouse and someone verifies and, and uh, allows that to happen. At the point that he finishes off his start of day and commits his inventory, it's going to do a warehouse transfer from the main his particular depot, which could be the main warehouse, to his truck. And that would be, if we're tracking that only in B-Mobile, it's uh, kept in B-Mobile as a non-posting transaction. If it's sent to the ERP, it would, it would tee up a transaction to be sent to the accounting system as a warehouse to warehouse transfer. I see, okay. Any questions on any of those? They're very similar to the ERP. I think the major distinction is sometimes whether we're going to send those transactions to accounting or not. And then certainly some of the automation that's happening on the B-Mobile side based on the, the need for route accounting to do more inventory control and more dynamic uh, reporting of inventory control. No, that makes sense. And, and I, think, uh, I think our customers will like the options of being able to control inventory using a mobile device. That's I think that's something that's very exciting. So that's the end of the slideshow. Um, let's jump out and do a couple um, quick looks at uh, the transactions from a desktop perspective. So you can see I'm in, in this particular transaction listing, uh, which is inventory transactions, and I have adjustments and I have PO receipts. So if I go into the adjustment, an adjustment for us in B-Mobile is always considered to be negative or an adjustment down. So in this case, I'm doing an adjustment on the 10th. Uh, it's labeled as an adjustment. It's to this particular warehouse and I'm increasing the quantities by putting negative in front. So it's increasing the quantities by two and one of those two uh, particular inventory items. Um, if I go to the uh, the handheld side, oh, I'm sorry, let's back up for a second. Let's go look at a PO receipt. And a PO receipt can be a very simplistic model like this one is, or it can take shape of a real PO form and a PO receipt uh, of entry. Uh, we've also done some work that get a little bit more complicated when you're receiving things from certain vendors in certain ways like trays, stacks, and units. So that if I'm ordering a thousand um, sourdough rolls, and it comes in 10, 10 stacks, three trays, and two units uh, based on the vendor's breakdown and how they package it. I can receive the tray stacks and units, so it makes my entry of, of things simpler and more, uh, more streamlined. Um, in this case, I'm doing the most simplistic version, which is on 719, I'm doing a PO receipt. It's from Reesers. It's uh, PO number X, and I'm receiving it in the warehouse one and I'm just calling out the items that I'm receiving and the quantities that I'm receiving them in. Um, pretty simple uh, solution. 
to increase the quantities uh, and a P over C is always considered an increase. You can't do a decrease like an adjustment. Makes sense. From a handheld perspective, if we look at that, uh, I'm in our warehouse management tool, which has the ability to just to step back and this will be for future. We have a PIC dashboard, a PO dashboard, and a physical count entry as well. So I'm in the, the PO dashboard um, and it's showing me all open POs that are in a status of receivable, meaning they're they're ready to receive. It, it also would show us uh, a listing of POs that are in the system that are already being received. So we kind of take over if we have multiple handouts in the in the warehouse that are that are working on the same thing twice, it would lock it down. But I'm working, I'm receiving PO number eight. I just use my finger to click into that. It shows me the relative data, and as you know, our grids are, are customizable, so I'm showing pretty minimal amount of data on this particular screen. But mm -hmm. they ordered 150. How many am I receiving? I'm receiving 150. And I would go down the list and key in, key in those things, and I'm receiving it into warehouse one. So once I'm done with that, I say done. It reminds me that I'm picking it insufficient on each one of the items, and it would put that into a pick status or receive status, and let me go on with uh, PO receiving. That PO would be updated in the ERP, and then the updated PO that comes back, you know, if we're gonna keep it open because we wanna receive the rest of those items tomorrow, maybe we got short, shorted, then that PO would be back to an open status and ready for me to receive again, against again. Does that make sense on those two fronts of, of different ways that we help? Not the only ways we help, but uh, just a couple of things to show off uh, in this short presentation. You know, it does, and I, and I like the option of receiving that on a handheld and it allowing the user to verify not only what they're receiving is accurate, but the quantities are correct as well. I, I like that. Yeah, and again, that, was the, that transaction was teed up was a PO receipt of goods, so without bill, right? So we're gonna do the receipt of goods, everything's dynamic within the system. Uh, we received those items. The on-hand inventory has been increased by the 150 units immediately. And again, one thing to, to kind of wrap, wrap a mind around is because we're not waiting for final booking inside of an ERP system, some CERP systems are not dynamic in nature. Uh, we are. So in, instantaneously, that inventory is on hand and ready for usage and ready for available for sale. Versus if you're doing it some, maybe in a Sage product like a Sage 100 or Sage 200, the PO receipt would have to go through a batch and go through an update process to be received in inventory. And it uh, takes maybe a little bit longer timing wise. We're assuming and be mobile that because it was received, it's in the system ready to go. And the transaction has not been posted yet. I see, I see, okay. So that's uh, our presentation of INS. Any other questions, Jerry, from that you're hearing from customers out there? No, Jeremy, that uh, that answers all of the, the questions that we had from our existing customers. It sounds like with our integration options to different ERP packages, we're really providing our customers a menu of options to uh, control their inventory and they get to choose which way works best for them. So that's exciting. Um, thank you everybody for joining this session and hopefully we answered all your questions if we didn't, please use the comments below and uh, type in your questions. We'll get those answered for you. And you can, as always, visit us at www.bmobileroute.com for further information on our solution. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for our next session where we dive in even deeper into inventory control. But until then, have a good day.